Hey yo, what up, Planet Earth? It's your boy, Maserati Burt. Shout out to Dutch and TV. Tune in. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Get all the way back, man. Tell uh, tell everybody where you grew up. Well, you know, I grew up in North New Jersey, South Side, 18th Street, 15th Ave, what is now known as the Ocean, a major. I say birthplace for most of the Crips that's, that's out here in New Jersey, Irvington, and East Orange. Right. South 18th Street, 15th Avenue, the ocean. <laughs> and for my uh, my hip hop fans out there, whenever you heard Red Man yell out Brick City, that's that's where he was talking about, right? Yeah, right around the corner. Right around the corner. <laughs> one of the goats, one of the goats, yeah. man. Yes, sir. Well, shit, um, to the best of your knowledge, how did, uh, you know, Bloods and Crips make their way to Brick City? Okay, well, from my side, and I can say this with the most 100% proof, and there's no one out there that can go against it if they do. I mean, you got to come up with the fact. But me, I was the first person to actually step foot in North and Irvington as an active gang member. You know, I was I was always the oddball out of a lot of people in my neighborhood. I always wanted to be different. If I was doing karate, everybody else did karate, I played basketball. If everybody else started playing basketball, I started gang man. And it took them a while to catch on to that. You know, I used to go to school. People used to make fun of the way I used to dress and everything. You know, I used to dress like the homies out west along with my North Urban Swag. And, you know, a lot of people really wasn't digging it. But now, let me see, since, let me see, late late 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, into the 2000s. That's when, you know, everybody started listening more to Ice Cube, yep. MC8, NWA, and everybody out on the West. And then noticing that, you know, the same gang signs, similar to what I used to grow up, I used to crip walk in school and everything. They noticed that along the videos and, you know, some people just took the program, copy, pasted, it, went along with it. Some people met the right people and got affiliated the correct way. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the best I could put it to that. Okay. And tell everybody out there what set you're from. I was originally a 83rd Street, what is known as HRA Gangsta Crips. I was originally one of them. But, you know, it, it's just a lot of things that took place after a while within that set that I really wasn't agreeing with. You know, you could just say it was a marriage that went bad. Mm. And I chose to go along with divorce and I found a new wife and her name is Insane Gangster Chris, 97 Trey, bad guy. Okay. Because I'm from Long Beach, born and raised. I'm, is that the same uh, branch of Insanes that are out here in Long Beach? No. Okay. No, it's not. Some okay. of them are. But the majority isn't. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not downplaying nobody or nothing. But the thing is, I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. And once I became insane, you know, a lot of people from Long Beach that's connected with the homies out in New York, they all, they told me how to got down. Well, how we say to get down, came along with the ICU. I don't dig too much. Not the ICU, the um, ICG, mm-hmm. my fault. But, um. I don't, I don't dig too much into to that set. You know, I had nothing bad to say about them. And it ain't much I can say about them. But I do know a lot of members, and they respect me, and they respect my decision. Some people, it's a little animosity amongst the two sets, and I don't really understand why. And, you know, like I said, I don't go into that. It's either you respect me or you don't. You friend or you foe. Simple, simple as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a lot of the uh, insane Crip gang homies, I know them all from New York, and they're in tune with the homies out there on the West Coast, Long Beach and everything. That's what they say, and you know what? That's that's how I'm a projector. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that that's how they break it down to me every time. Yeah, we connected with the homies on Long Beach. And I say, okay, I, I don't doubt nobody. I don't even try to question them or nothing because at the end of the day, when you're claiming something, eventually 
the originators, they're going to find out. They're going to catch up to you. And if you're not legit, you know, it, it's the price you got to pay for that. Mm. Everybody knows that. Mm. Well, shit, let's take it back a little bit before Bloods and Crips even came into the picture. To the best right. of your knowledge, uh, what were some of the gangs that were, you know, hanging around um, Newark around that time, you know, before the Bloods and Crips even popped okay. up on the scene? From my knowledge, you had the Alley Cat, the Aztec. You had a few pimps and tomahawks out here. A few people that called themselves the Jolly Stompers. And once you came across my era, you, you had a whole bunch of regular street gangs with all kinds of crazy names. Like me, me and my boys, we, we, we went by this uh, group called the Poison Clan because, you know, we always did karate. Okay. And, and we used to watch a lot of karate flicks. We was big on the Wu Tang Clan, you know. We wanted to be just like them, so we came along with the Poison Clan, called ourselves the FDB, which is Five Deadly Venom. But you normally know if you watch the movie, it's Six Venom. Mm-hmm. But number six, he's not as powerful as one through five. Number six just knows a piece of what one through five knows, and he could never beat one of the Venoms by itself. He has to team up with his Venom man. You know, that was one of my little brothers. Like, we really, we really played you it. You guys put that shit, you really thought that, it out, right? Yeah, yeah. We really played that one to the full. And, you know, I came across a guy from the West Coast. I'm not going to say his name because, you know, he he's in enough shit as, you know, as it is. And, um, he took me to New York. And I got jumped in inside that park. Uh, what is it? Central Park? Okay. In Times Square, Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right all the way up top. Yeah, and all my New Yorkers, they know exactly what I'm talking about because within that park, it's a section that has a staircase all the way to the top of this brick foundation. It got a whole bunch of brick benches, feet and checkerboards and everything, or chessboards. Uh-huh. I got jumped in right there. <laughs> okay. Right there. And how were you? 14. Okay. Yeah, it's about an average age. I'm yeah. A, yeah. I'm assuming before that you were out there being a little reckless. I wouldn't even say reckless. I, I would say I was a ladies' man. But for the fact that I was a ladies' man, that got me in a lot of trouble with a lot of males amongst the neighborhood. So, yeah, you, you can say it, it was reckless, but not in the I'm out there looking for trouble type reckless. You know, okay. I played basketball. I was just a lot of females. You know, just a typical teenager. Just that I was a part of a gang and I always kept it low key, but only a few people that was around me, they knew what was going on. And I tried to bring some of them into it, get them involved. A few came, a few stayed, you know, new to and up to this very day. We, we all still good friends. You know, it, it's nothing. I even grew up with a lot of people who I used to sleep in their house. They used to sleep in my house, eat each other food and everything. And it's like now, since James done like really, really came into the to the picture like an epidemic, everybody everybody's a gang member. Some way, somehow everybody's a gang member or a gang affiliate and it's just crazy that you could grow up with some people, best friends to the point you brothers, but gangs, they, they happen to, to separate a lot of that. And mm-hmm. if you fall into it, yeah, you you'll find yourself beefing with family members friends for a very long time but behind you know what a lot of people call a rag or a flag mm. it depends on what side you want you know crips we call it rags bloods they call it flag hey yo what up planet earth it's your boy maserati Burt. shout out to dusty vision tv tune in just give me a little bit of peace a steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace a steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace a steady job and and i've talked to a couple of cats from the east coast and maybe you can kind of elaborate on this but they said that at the beginning that um I'm trying to put this in the correct words, that they were, I guess, cripping and blooding wrong, including the eight ball alliance and, and things like that. Yes, definitely. Talk to and you know that. what? I'm glad you 
I'm glad you touched on that subject because a lot of people don't really touch on that subject. But um, the the eight ball thing, a lot of neighborhood sets they were using the eight ball inside of a six point star, mainly um some rolling sixty crypt. I don't know if they were real rolling sixty crypt, but the rolling sixty crypt that I know, they all emerged from what I told you earlier, the ocean. 15th Ave and 18th Street in North New Jersey. That's where I met a lot of Rolling 60 Crips. Because um, once I moved out of that hood, I was traveling, you know, from state to state, doing a lot of karate fights, doing music, and, you know, just getting out to explore the world, just to learn a little bit more than the hood. And it's like when I came back and just started, you know, seeing what's actually taking place, yeah, you know, a lot of people was out here gangbang saying, the ones that came at me sideways and tried to oppose me because uh, I guess they, they learned a little bit of what they called knowledge back then, which was really incorrect. They tried to detect me, and I make them look stupid, and I, I got a lot of enemies behind that for a while. But, you know, things simmer down. People grow up. Some people don't. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as that eight ball, yeah, they used to put the eight ball inside of the six-point star which is really some GD stuff, GD, BD, folk nation type stuff. That's, that's, that has nothing to do with Crips. Uh, an eight ball inside of a six-point star, a six-point star, period. Does it have nothing to do with Crips? And Crips know that. The GDs know that in the folk nation and every everybody that's a part of that particular branch. They all know that. And, yeah, you know, a lot of the um, GDs and the folks, they, they was in a big disagreement with a lot of Crips using the six-point star just for the fact that that six-point star came from their system, mm-hmm. their system or not. It's two, it's a triangle. You know, one is upside down, of course, one is right side up, and each point stands for something. And through the time of that, the definition of the points changed. Sometimes it didn't. But there was a lot of folk knowledge going around the neighborhood that Crips were using and saying it was crypt knowledge when really that wasn't even the get down on that part. Nobody really learned about cripping to the full until Monster Cody came out with his book, Monster. And, you know, a lot of people read that book. And it's like that book had so much knowledge to the point it was devastating that you could have been a opposer. If you read that book, you could have started your own set with every, every word out of that book. Wow, I had no idea that people, I mean, it makes sense now that you say it, but I know exactly what book you're talking about. Um, it's it's yeah. interesting that that is, is one of the reasons that, um, you know, got kind of got everyone, quote unquote, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, Monster Cody, he was the reason why I became the crypt that I was today, mm-hmm. well, that I am today. It's because of him. He was a big, a big influence on my life through the gang culture, and. I even had the pleasure to come across him and have a few video chats with him, a lot of phone conversations, but we never really discussed crit business unless, you know, he was dropping some gems and giving me some knowledge. Otherwise, we, we used to just talk like, like regular people, you know, on just building, you know, seeing what, what can be better, what can change, what should be left alone. You know, you know things like that just to keep our planet in order. You know? She said she want to see the city bus She don't want to ride the city bus Because she's new to the town I advise look for truth The ears are lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud Dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes
Man of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blames instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor, girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to, baby? That's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about, baby, just sit your ass down you wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather Maybe we cut a rug, drinking and driving on the low key Rum in a jug, give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, go. go Put your seatbelt on, up in the way we bout to go The road is gon' get windy, promise not to lose control The final destination's bound to captivate your soul And so, many MCs inspired to be One of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC Then the law came life, now your dreams deferred All the years of writing rhymes captured in a blur My ponders contemplating the worst Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'm making others believe in you too When it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point Of hurting people That you're close to Yeah most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Hey yo, what up Planet Earth? This your boy Maserati Burke Shout out to Dusty Vision TV Tune in just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little Who's, bit of peace the, Would you say is the biggest gang in Newark, numbers-wise? The biggest gang in Newark, numbers-wise, hands down, is the Grape Street Crips. Mm. They got it. <laughs> they got it, man. They, they cover Jersey like water covers the earth, man. That's that's no lie. I, I don't take that from them at all. They they are super deep, man. I mean, super deep. And Jersey in general, correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, is safe to say that it's a it's a Crip state. Mostly, it's mostly Crips. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Okay. Yeah, I say that it's mostly Crips, except for uh, Trent. Gotcha. Trenton, you know, it's, it's Crips up there, they exist, but Trenton's blooded out. Very okay. blooded out. Okay. Even in the jail system, the jail system, blood rule. It's a lot of Crips in jail, but in jail, blood rule, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. I tell you that the straight truth. There's more, there's more bloods in, in jail than it is to Crips. And the thing is, the ratio... For that, it's about for every crip, you got seven to 12 bloods in there. And trust me, if you go inside Essex County Correctional, which everyone knows is the green monster, just just get ready just get ready for bullshit the moment you walk in, unless you, you're a person with high status, got a good street rep, and you know a lot of people. Otherwise, e- even in some situations like that, depending on who you are, Everybody's going to test you. Everybody's going to want to test you. I mean, I've been tested a couple of times when I was in jail, but not by the people that would normally test you. It's always the younger crowd, the ones that's looking to get a name for themselves and 
build a reputation, but that was a failure for them. I mean, seriously, hands down, I beat them motherfuckers up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at what they call the status of OG, original gangster. I had it since I was 14. Got stamped at 17. Didn't really start pushing the status until I was 21 to 23. Started my own set when I was 23. That's when I got permission to start a set at 23. So all of my friends that that was around me, I recruited them. Hmm. How does someone get permission to start a a set? All right. I'm going to tell you how I got permission to start a set. The guy who was OG in me when I was an 83rd gangster, he, um... I can honestly say he had, you know, he pulled the wool over everyone's eyes because to leave it to him, he was officially under Monster Cody. And he put that, he put that thought in our heads for years. And me and my group, we was out on the street doing what we do, going through hell. He was never around. But when shit calmed down and everything was all good, oh, he comes around and he takes all the credit for everything, which is no problem to me. Because I still had my reputation in, in in my areas, and which overshadowed him. And what it was, once I brought him to the hood and introduced him to everybody, it's like everybody was starstruck. So like, oh, shit. We got an OG that's higher than our OG out here. Let's fuck with this dude. And then it's like he, he took my whole set from under me. <laughs> oh wow! And yeah, yeah, and then you know I just rebuild, I rebuild, and it was nothing. You know, I I had a came back with a stronger set, more numbers, and you know we we did our thing. And when I actually came across Monster Cody himself, and I told him who I was and where I was from, I never once had to ask him, hey. Have you heard of a such and such? Because I'm not even going to mention that guy's name. Because he, he gets no more clout, no more fame, nothing. Because a lot of us yeah. lost our lives. A lot of us Yo, went what? to jail behind his movement. And, mm. you know, came the day Monster Cody asked me. He said, hey, uh, so who, who, who's your OG out there? Who's your big home? And I told him who he was. And like I expected... Monster Cody didn't know nothing of the guy. So that's when Monster got me what most people call left, which is super left, officially under the 83rd wing. By the time that started happening, a lot of attention was being drawn to me. Enemies that I was beefing with, there was 83rd also. They, they started drawing to me, and it's like everybody's paying attention to me watching who I'm talking to, watching who's communicating with me. And, you know, all through social media, they go behind my back and talk to these guys on the West Coast and tell them, like, yeah, man, you know, uh, Merck, he, he's this, he's that, and he, he out here, he did this, and he did that, and he won't let us do this, and he won't let us do that. Yeah. And those big homies told them, they said, hey, do you know what a big homie is? And those guys are like, well, yeah, we know it's a big homie, but what's your definition of a big homie? And then the dude told me, he said, Merck is the definition of a big homie. That man stuck his neck out for y'all just to make sure you was okay and you go behind his back and this is what you do. We can't really fuck with y'all like mm-hmm. that. But there's a lot of homies out there on the West that, you know, fuck, fuck with homies over here. And I don't, I don't discredit nobody. I don't say nothing because at the end of the day, you know, the real is going to figure out the real. That's, that's, that's the simplest way I can put it there. Oh, yeah. No, 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 come on. It's just you and me. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go uh-huh. to recess, but I take that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200000 I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. On. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling 
feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug, they trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy, replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up, and now we two steps beyond these flames, kicking up dust. Never running from the smoke. Hold up. We really want the smoke only from Clone God, though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. My inner sugar ooh, free. Ooh. I'm a Gemini, bitch. So you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars apart. And if I snap, girl, I'm sorry. Bitch, pass me the lighter. I'm about to play street fire. Hot Dugan that pussy, like my name Kenna Ryu She says she never kissed a girl, well bitch tonight you experiment Put this tablet on your tongue and just enjoy the experience One plus one equals two, I'm talking you and me You talking me and you, when we come together we be feeling absolute We put one in the air and be feeling so cool ooh, ooh. Hey yo, what up Planet Earth, it's your boy Maserati Burt, shout out to Dusty Vision TV, tune in. Just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. Maserati Merc, I want to jump into a little bit of hip hop, man. Um, just a few stories. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, a few, you know what I'm saying? A few stories that, that have happened, you know, in the recent, you know, within the past year or so, and I would love your your thoughts on it. Um, shit, let's, okay. Yeah, shit, let's go, uh, let's go, I guess, you know, kind of the most recent. It seems like, you know, rappers have been dropping like flies lately, man. Um, yeah, you know, man, yeah. and, you know, it's pretty fucked up, you know. Just, just a couple of days ago, a, a North rapper just got killed out here. I heard about that. You know, he's a blood uh, member. Triple yeah, Beans? Name, Triple Beans, yeah. yeah. I was just looking him up. Yeah, Triple Beans. And, you know, I don't know what he did to deserve what he got, you know. Explain to everybody but, the story because I'm not too hip to it. I, I just heard the name and I, and I didn't know much about other than that. Well, I can't tell you a story. Yeah, or just I what you know about, you like what, what you read. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and... Because um, it's on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, it's on YouTube, oh, Facebook, and everything. I mean, it, it's major, you know, because when when I first saw it, it as, as it shows on the camera, you know, he was coming out of a store on Hawthorne Avenue in between um, 12th and Osborne, if I'm not mistaken. And he was walking to the Range Rover, and it's like, you know, he... He didn't even have a fighting chance, man. He didn't even see it coming. You know, by the way it looked, as the game goes, you know, the ops had a, had one up on him because they obviously knew where he were. You could tell just by the way they pulled out on the cameras. You know, they pulled up and they double parked. And it's like the moment he came out of the store, he went to his car, turned his back, and boom, they got him, man. And, and, I was like, whoa, you know, like it is, it's, you know, you, you see shit like that every day up close and personal out here. I mean, honestly, it's like every, every corner you turn, something is going on. Something is about to happen or something just got to finish. Happening. Oh, shit. I grew up in, and, I grew up in early nineties, LA. I, was, I wasn't even a gangbanger, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Something always. Yeah, something man. And you know, it, it, it's just like, wow, that, that could have been anybody. Mm. But to touch on your subject about all of these rappers that's dying, it, it's just crazy to have clout, money, what, what, whatever whatever is on your mind can just drive you and put you into that state. And what a lot of people don't realize is once, like Joe Button said, Joe Button said it the best. After that, rap in the booth is back to the truth. He said that on the song called Real Life and Rap. And um he was basically talking about, you know, what what we the subject that we touching on now, you know, I mean, this this goes way back before King Bond, you know, we, we could take it to 
the Biggie and Tupac era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and even 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 a little bit even a little bit further before Biggie and Tupac, you got uh what what, what was his name? Chi Ali. Oh Chi Ali. Chi Ali, Scott LaRock, yeah, all all of them. Flick Rick. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. thing thing is when especially when you're a rapper, you cannot say well, you can say what you want to say mm-hmm. about whoever, whenever, but there's always a consequence to it, especially when the situation is real. And those boys out in Chicago, man, I, I salute them for being soldiers in the field, but I also send my heart out to them because they are young. Man. They're babies, man. And, you know, they, 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 I mean, even down to my boy Pop Smoke, like, I, for him heavy, you know, it's, it's like, once you, once you start doing what you do, Fuck the fame, fuck the popularity, fuck the numbers, man. Like, just stick with your fan base and your true supporters. And everything doesn't have to go on social media. Everything doesn't have to be discussed. Everything doesn't have to go live and on YouTube. Because that, that's how people catch you, you know, along with your whereabouts. Mm-hmm. Believe me, I, I got a lot of enemies out here. They all follow me on Facebook and I just look at their pictures, and these pictures is in the same area, and all the areas are so familiar to the point where if I felt like I wanted to react, I automatically got a drop on you just for the fact that you posting up pictures everywhere you're posting with an address with mm-hmm. familiar landmarks, and you out here talking shit. Oh, yeah. I have very few enemies, like literally very few, not even on a level that you know you guys would, but don't ever post my location. If I'm chilling with you, if I'm with my people, don't post where we're at i just don't be posting that location right. shit man yeah man because it, it, it'll get you jammed up mm-hmm. and, and, and even down even down even down with the females man like set your ass up i mean yeah you know females is like females to guys i'm not even going to say females is like but females to guys they are just like money. Yeah. The root of all evil. People it's our do biggest, everything. Pussy is our biggest weakness, man. Yes, pussy is our biggest weakness. I mean, think about it. You as a guy, why do you get up every day and get money? That, why exactly. do you keep yourself clean? Thank you. Why do you keep yourself on top of your game? Because if I see a female, female, exactly. And it's always been exactly. that way. Ever since we went to high school, middle school, we, we freshened up our shoes. We It wasn't for, to impress yeah. the fuck. Dudes, it was to impress the females and get Hell some no, nah. it was to impress the females. Because, I mean, I, I just, man, it, it's plenty of times when I was a young boy and, you know, I'm out here looking at girls, but I'm like, God damn, man. I'm out here in a sweatsuit and Chuck Taylor. Or I'm over here wearing this khaki suit with Puma sneakers. And they just looking at me like, what the f***? But then, you know, once I started getting a little bit of that street money and Going back to my natural brick city swag for for the time being, yeah, you know things things started to look up, even though it was negative. Things started to look up for me in a positive way, and what I mean by positive is like everything that I wanted to happen started happening. Go the way it was happening, how we would say is against the law, because <laughs> our government disapproves of it. Even though they're doing, they're, even though they're doing it yeah, times a I million. Mean, yeah, right. You you know that type. Of <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. But, but um, shit. You touched on a few things actually that I would like to to kind of dive a little bit deeper into. Um, you mentioned King Von. He was one of the most recent, and in my opinion, I f- with the drill scene. Even though I'm yeah, oldest. Man. FBG Duck. Yeah, FBG Duck. Yeah, I want to talk to him we about him we also. Can't forget about Man, that. if you gonna <laughs> slide pussy nigga, then slide in. That was my shit. But <laughs> right, King, right. King Von, um, I want to talk about him specifically, then I want to jump to FBG Duck on a totally separate um subject. But King Von, right? Yeah, Every, yeah. King Von, I, I think he had it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he had the look, he had the flow, he had everything, right? Um for anyone yeah, who doesn't yeah, know for anyone who doesn't know out there, you know, he got popped outside of a, a, a hookah bar by one of Quando Rondo's people. Uh, my my yeah. question for you is uh, the dude who shot King Von is named Lil Timmy. Lil Timmy, yeah. Did 
Lil Timmy, in your opinion, and, and keep in mind, this doesn't mean you're glorifying it, but it's just like this. Maybe it's like this when you're moving in the street and, you know, you have 30 dudes rushing your, your homie. But in your opinion, did Lil Timmy do the right thing? If you ask me, Lil Timmy, I'm not going to say he did the right thing. I'm not going to say he did the wrong thing. But what I will say is Lil Timmy did what Lil Timmy was supposed to do as an active gang member. That's that's what Lil Timmy did. Because I'm pretty sure if it was the other way around, it it happened that way too. You know, like me, me and the, me and a few people, we we had this discussion, man. I don't choose no sides. I have my favorites. I don't choose no sides, but I call it straight down the pipe. You you got the BDs out there, which was uh, Chief Keith, Fredo Santana, and King Von, and um, all of them, right? What it seems like on the trolling part, they was getting the best of the GDs, which was, you know, FBG Duck and all of them. Okay. They was getting the best of them on the trolling part. But when it came to the, to the actual game itself being played, it's casualties of war, I salute the girl, Jakira Barnes, because she was out there whacking big homies. She wasn't taking no little motherfuckers out. She was whacking big homies. I mean, people with a stain and a name. You know what I'm saying? And nobody wants to see their favorite rapper or somebody that they like go out like that. It's like, yeah, yeah, my man out here, he's spitting that hot shit. He out here catching bodies. He's selling drugs. He getting the bitches. He got the money, this and that. But when something happens to him, it's, oh, let's stop the violence. Let's be peaceful, this yeah. and that. And, you know, it, it's the same with FBG Duck, too. You know, I I favor, I ain't going to say I favor the GDs more than BDs because, really, I haven't been around BDs much, but I've been around a lot of GDs. And, you know, GDs love me. I love them back, and we here for each other. But the thing is, even FBG Duck, he had his days of, you know, trolling, smoking op packs. Well, shit, as he, they say, like what a month before he died, he had that song "Debit." Yeah, Debit. Yeah, that was the last <sighs> song that I listened to. Man, before he, and I said, "Yo, these motherfuckers is wild." Right? They really out here saying each other names, and it's like they live right around the fucking corner from each other, man. I mean, you could literally walk two to three blocks over. Not even do a drive by. Sixty third, two street over. Yeah, you could do a walk by, <laughs> mm. and you know it. That that's why I say you know when it comes to the game and not even the art of war, but war period. I, I really, I really salute all of them on both sides because they they soldiers, man. They they out here doing what soldiers do, but it can always be better things done. Also, at the same time. Everything don't got to be violent. You know, you could you could always result to that, uh, put the guns down and the gloves on movement, too. I, I would love it. Man, dog, you're lit. You know what? You're, this shit is, st- this shit is spreading because you're literally probably the third person I've interviewed maybe in the past month and a half who said that, and I love that fucking idea. Yeah, I, I, love, I love to put the gloves on and beat the shit out of my head. Love that idea, homie. <laughs> I mean, you can't go to jail. Nobody doesn't get killed. Mm. I mean, feelings and emotions are hurt and shattered, but you can always build back from that. Yeah, and the problem is these guys can't fight, dog. I, I see that every once in a while I come yeah. across like an Instagram post from, from a rapper who's this big-ass, badass gangster rapper, and he's hitting a punching bag or something like that, practicing boxing, and you could tell he's never been in a fight a day in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's Trust just scary. Me, That's why they're so quick to pull out the blammer. <laughs> when when they see me hit that, I, 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 the last video I did in the gym, I did, I think it was a 30-second boxing drill where I was just letting my hands fly. I was letting them fly to the point it looked, it sounded like I started making instrumentals the way I was hitting that shit. So people look at it and they like, he has some type of experience. He has some type of training, which is true. 
Now, the thing is with rappers, they figure they go to the gym, put on a pair of boxing gloves, throw a nice little flashy combo here, nice little flashy combo there. Yeah, it's cool. It, it looks good. But <laughs> do you have the endurance to actually go through that fight? It's the same. It's the same as getting jumped in in the gang. You know, like do you? You might could throw your hands. But do you have the determination and the will to survive and keep fighting? Because where I'm from, it ain't how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get your ass back up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. that's, that's, that's the simplest way I can put it on now. Hey, yo, what up, Planet Earth? It's your boy, Maserati Merck. Shout out to Dusty Vision TV. Tune in. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a Let's jump into uh, Pop Smoke. You mentioned Pop Smoke. And for anybody yeah, out there who doesn't. The who, yeah. yeah. To anyone out there who's not familiar, because you know I do have a, a lot of older cats who listen, who aren't aren't hip to to hip hop. He was supposed to be the next big thing, um, a crip out of New York. He had everybody's cosign. Yeah. He was the next big thing, and for lack of better words, he got caught slipping out here you in Los what? Angeles. Yeah, even for that time, he had his reign. I'm going to say he was the big thing at the time. Okay, so he was the most talked about, okay. whether it was positive or negative. He was the trending thing out of New York. I remember that. My question for you, because he got caught slap slipping out here in L.A. when the address got leaked in a, in a very rich part of town. And, um, yeah. And he um, got caught slipping, for lack of better words. But my question for you, and then you could dive into what you just mentioned, you know, if you would like to. Um, how do you think rappers with gang ties should move, you know, when they're traveling from state to state? Well, for the fact that um, a lot of them, for, that they have a big-ass entourage, they feel a little bit invincible. No, me, I don't move with an entourage. My, my wife is right here. She'll tell you. When I go to shows, I'm solo. I'm by myself. And it depends on, you know, who's coming to the show. Yes, I will take protection. But luckily, I never had to use it. And that's, that's a plus. You know, everybody out here in Jersey, they'll tell you. Even even Pennsylvania, New York, and all the other places that I performed outside of Jersey, not once did an incident take place and it was because of me. Not once. Anytime I went to Pennsylvania and did a few shows out there, I had some prick homies that was performing too, and a lot of shit kicked off. Because of them. At one point in time, I got in the mix of it because, you know, I wasn't out there a lot. So it's easy to throw somebody's name up who's not on the scene. But I was out there every weekend like I lived it. We came across some dudes. Long story short, I wasn't the one with the gun, but I was chasing the guy that had the gun, which was backwards. Oh, but, okay. but, but it's solid proof, man. I, I can put the people on, on the phone with you. Even the people that had the gun. So we, we cool. Mm. But, uh, yeah, man. They need to move, you know, silent. Like the bosses that they portray themselves to be. And, you know, come come, come, come with some love in your heart, to be honest. You, you ain't too gangster to go nowhere and spread no love. I mean, that's the first lesson that God teaches love. I mean, I, I know when when I was a baby, the first thing I learned how to do was love my parents mm. and love people, oh. you know? I can't speak for too many other people, but that's that's that's, that's honest. That's honest to God's truth right there. And, um, I like that, man. You know, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's all on your aura. It's all on your attitude and... I mean, a hater is going to be a hater. They're going to hate you regardless. But people that don't know you, when you when you go to shows and everything, there's been plenty of shows I went to. Sometimes I had a lot of jewelry on, and I went there with that attitude like, yeah, I'm the shit. But that was a mental thing. I didn't walk around the club like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that nigga. Blah, blah, blah. Because I, I know everybody in the club with me so i'm cool i'm chilling i'm from one place to another networking with everybody now if you got a problem with me 
and you feel like you want to touch me, that sucks for you because everybody in the building is going to beat your mother mm. <laughs> Cause um I, I I got love for everybody and you know if it look like things are about to get crazy, everybody knows how I'm coming. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna tell you. Everybody knows how I'm coming, man. You know, big big bro Mazi is there, and I try to eliminate the situation before shit gets crazy. Cause I don't want to go. To shit. No, we don't want to fight, right? Like, I don't, I don't want. Be, I'm yeah, chilling with my yeah. girl. Like I want to have some dinner. I don't want to fight tonight like can you you know yeah, what I'm like you know we we all out here to show why you mean mugging everybody why why you acting like you yeah, mad at that's the, the home you can't take anywhere <laughs> man they just mad dog white yeah, you're you looking at white boy home. Damn, dog, what are you doing? yeah yeah that's shit. you gotta you gotta leave them with where, where they at mm. 10 out of 10 if they was to get in trouble they can't get themselves out of this but you can mm. but being that you the superstar that's what that's what that's what the um the authorities are gonna look at, and they say, well, yeah, he's a superstar. He's the one they all came to see. He has the money, so guess what? We are gonna get his ass. And if he wants to, and if he values his career, oh, trust me, he's gonna give up some names, or he's gonna pay a hell of a price. Either way, we got. Him. Um, shit. My last question for you, man. I used to fuck with the. The battle rap scene pretty heavy, you know, like maybe a few years back. Um, yeah, okay. and and I don't know what it is about New Jersey, but you motherfuckers have literally my two my two favorite battlers when it comes to that scene of all time. And like I said, I've been out of it four minutes, so I haven't, you know, caught up. But my two favorite are Arsenal and Shotgun Shug. I'm gonna just keep it. You Arsenal know, and Shotgun Shug. I'm gonna keep that's just, in the that's just me right. personally. I'm just keeping it real. I just kind of like that disrespectful you know type of flow obviously you got like Sue yeah. surf you know like what what is it about jersey man and 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 all these dope yeah, ass his, hood, his hood is actually five minutes away from and uh okay. shotgun Shug and arsenal they hood is about 15 minutes away from. okay and Sue surf is from 60s yeah he's 60 okay. crescent lane shout out to the homies at crescent lane okay and for the most part, you guys, you guys are pretty much cool with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all don't got no issues with each other. I mean, at one point in time, I did have a heavy beef with his hood behind something that I didn't even do, but for the fact that it was other people that I was beefing with claiming the same set as me, and that's how I got drawn into that shit. And you know, I, I don't run from people, and at the same time, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, hey. Why the fuck y'all doing this to me? Nah, like you, you should know better. But we, we, we real good now, and you know the misunderstanding folded over and everything got clear. And you know they know who's who and what's what. But trust me, that that hood over there ain't nothing to fuck with either. They ain't nobody to speak for. Mm. Crescent Lane, that's another crip haven. Anything else you want to plug before we we call it a night, dog? The floor is yours. All right, well, you know, I, I just want to um, just give a shout-out to everybody. You know, we 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 in crazy, corrupt times to yep. the point where we're, we we really have to get used to, to this adjustment, and we got to make the best of it. 